Hello and welcome back to another Elden Ring video. Today we're going to be taking a look and dissecting the Putrescent Knight boss. This boss is the last boss for the Stone Coffin Legacy Dungeon. And I've gotten requests to make boss videos, uh, specifically boss guides. And with the DLC coming out for Elden Ring, I decided to give that a go, and several people tell me that I should do this first. Now, I've beaten this boss a handful of times, um, with multiple different characters, multiple different strategies, multiple different builds. What I found works best is melee builds. You can use a caster builds. The boss runs likes to run away a lot though, and I feel like personally, it's easier to just use a melee build because most casting doesn't have very good tracking, and so you just miss and waste a lot of FP. So with that being said, I'm going to break down the boss and I'm going to show you five builds pure stat builds for beating the boss. If you wanted my opinion on which is best, I would have to say that Faith is probably going to be best for this boss, followed by Arcane and Magic. Strength and Dexterity are definitely good, however the options they have are limited by the boss's speed. And also, I would like to point out that if you're struggling in melee with him, he does have very bad hitboxes. As you can see in these examples, the hilt and arm of his attacks have a much larger hitbox than they should have. And so that makes it kind of hard to stick close to him and strafe, which I know a lot of you guys recommend. I do recommend sticking close to him on some attacks, however, definitely you shouldn't stick close to him for every attack. So this first move that we're going to look at is mostly going to be his opening attack, although he can do it after his opening. This is probably the hardest move to dodge consistently. When he first rises up and slams down, you want to roll into him and sort kind of circle around him. This will cause him to angle and flip back around towards you, causing his attack to miss. And then after that, you want to stay as far away from him as possible on his next charge towards you because that gives you the most time to dodge his horse and react to his horse attack. And then you want to always angle yourself so you're not perfectly straight on because that does allow his attacks to hit you more often. On his final swing back, you can run up to him as he's getting on his horse. You can do some pretty good damage to him. Now this next attack is going to be his triple swing combo when you're really up close to him. This is one of his moves that it looks like you should be able to strafe and just stick close to him without being hit, but you can't because of his hitboxes. When you're trying to dodge this, you want to roll into him on his first three swings, and then he can follow up with his overhead slams, and at that point you want to roll into him some more, but be careful because these swings are going to be a little bit delayed, and you can follow up with a punish on this attack. So next, I'm going to showcase his throwing move. This move has the best hitboxes of the fight, and what's nice about this is he runs away from you, but when he does his double throw, he leaves himself wide open to attacks if you can capitalize on his positioning. Now dodging attacks themselves aren't very hard, they're pretty well telegraphed, and it's pretty forgiving for strafing. So his phase transition move looks really scary, it's actually not that bad, because the flames are super forgiving. You can roll it, but the most consistent method is to jump it. And the jump timing is super, super lenient because you can jump basically when the fire's at you, or you can jump when it's like the fire's coming towards you and still be fine. You can obviously mess up the jump if you jump way too early, but in general, it's super easy to just jump on reaction to the fire hitting the ground in front of the boss. And after the phase transition, he gets a new attack that he likes to use right after. And it's basically the same thing, he spawns a wall of fire in front of him. You can jump it, you can roll it, or you can strafe it to the side. Depending on how close you are, I would either recommend jumping it, or rolling to the side. Whatever you feel is going to give you the best punish opportunity after his attack is done. So then we have his wide three swings. As you can see in this video, it's basically more of the same, you just want to roll through it. You can't really strafe it because again, his hitboxes. And he'll run away from you after doing this, so you do lose a lot of aggression opportunities. 
Then we have his two hit charge, a, a bad attack if you're caught in it, but if you can see it coming and run back like towards where his attack is going, it misses and it leaves you wide open for a nice punish window. And then his stomp and his scream are probably the two least telegraphed attacks. And the scream is designed to break shields, it does also do a little bit of damage, and the stomp is just to get you off of his front. A lot of bosses in Elden Ring have this. I would just recommend blocking it or rolling the stomp and then rolling the scream right after that. Then we have this ring of fire that goes towards the boss and it's very reminiscent of the old Demon King from Dark Souls 3. This is one of his phase transition moves that he gets. And so this attack is super easy to dodge. You don't want to be right next to him because as the flames get close to him and they come like to him, they kind of jump up. And so you can't jump that, you'll get hit. But you can jump it any time before then super easily or you can roll through it. And if you jump, as I'm doing this video, you jump towards the flame and angle yourself back to him, you can punish him with an attack, assuming your weapon has enough range. Okay, now for the build. As I said earlier, I would recommend Faith, and then Arcane, then Int, and then Strength and Dexterity last. The, my Arcane recommendation is Starfist. You can definitely use Starfist on any build, and it's still gonna rock all the bosses. Starfist is probably the best weapon in the game, just check so many boxes that it has good DPS, it has good poise damage, it has good damage per hit, it has good poise damage per second, it's easy to obtain, it's super easy to use, it's fast. So strength is going to be the optimal build for Starfist, however because I was using Starfist and Arcane because Arcane didn't really have any other good options, I decided to go with a Giant Crusher build. Now, if you've ever used Giant Crusher, this is probably a very familiar setup. So we have the two-hand sword talisman, the axe talisman, and the spiked crack tier, boosting our charge attack damage as high as it can go. We have 50 strength. The soft cap would be 54 for two-handing to get 80 strength, but we needed the, well, needed the extra endurance for our armor. For the armor, I chose a Solitude set. It's a good defensive set. It has high poise, which should help us poise boss attacks. And we have Royal Knight's Resolve on the Giant Crusher. So basically, no matter what you do, you want a Royal Knight's Resolve, do a charged attack, and then just dodge all of his other attacks until you can safely punish the attack with Royal Knight's Resolve Charger 2. This does a lot of damage, as you can see in these clips and it's probably the easiest way of getting him whittling down, whittling him down in as few as hits as possible on a strength build. Although for consistency's sake, again, I would recommend Starfist, but this is just an alternative option. And armor, it's really just for the poise. If you have something that's more poise efficient or you can't get enough endurance, that's perfectly fine. It's not that big of a deal. So next we have the Dexterity build. This is using backhand blades. Now I've used backhand blades on multiple different builds when I fought him. They are definitely very good. The best part about it is that you can keep aggressing because the running attacks have so few recovery frames. And you can also angle blind spot to dodge some of the attacks and get your own attack off. Although that's not as consistent because his hitboxes are so large. And so obviously we're using the Rakasha armor set to boost our damage. And we're stacking multi-hit damage talismans and multi-hit damage crystal tiers. And that's gonna give us the highest damage possible. And a nice thing about dexterity is since that we have, since we have Millicent's prosthesis, we get five points of dexterity that we can put somewhere else because Millicent's prosthesis gives us five dexterity. Now this is my favorite build that I've used. It's not the best build, but this is my favorite. Again, we're using the Rakasha armor set to boost our damage, and we're using the Carrion Thrusting Shield on an Int build, because that gives us super high damage, and it allows us to block his attacks while also attacking with our own attacks. So if you've never used a Thrusting Shield, it's basically a shield and a spear, and the 
attacks that you can do have blocking frames in them, so you can block attacks and similarly dish out damage, and you can block poke. And with this, you really just block any attack he has, you don't take super high chip damage, and you attack back very safely. As you can see, I wasn't really, I didn't need to use many healing flasks, and this is the first time that I used the build against him. Next we have the best build, probably. Now, I'm just gonna put out a warning. I didn't calculate that this is the best build. I'm just, just going to assume it is. Euphoria after the buff is super strong. Admittedly, something like Coded Straight Sword might be stronger if you power stance them. I haven't done the math, so disclaimer, right? Euphoria is very strong, especially with the Ash of War. Now, I was able to kill him super fast, uh, first try actually, and I wasn't able to use the Ash of War. Yeah, I just killed him too fast, so I died and respawned him. So this is like the third try or whatever, because he just melts so fast you can't get the Ash of War off. But he's weak to Holy. And so Euphoria, being a twin blade, you're able to stack multi-hit talismans very nicely. And his the Euphoria's Ash of War actually scales on multi-hit. And for the final build, we have Starfist. It's basically the same thing as those, what I was saying with Strength. Uh, but multi-hit talismans, charge R2, and it does insane poise damage, and it does good damage overall. So you crit the boss, and the fight's basically over at that point. Yeah. You could also use Sacred Starfist and Magic Starfist. Like, as I said in the beginning, Starfist is probably the best weapon in the game. It's You can use it on any build, and it really doesn't suffer much of a damage penalty. And it's just that good where it's probably the best weapon for every build, but build diversity, you know, want to give you guys some good options thank you guys for watching and if you have any ideas on what boss i should do next or if you just want me to do dancing lion please leave me your thoughts